welcome to another episode of the 8-Bit Retro Reap Things. Don't worry, it's not Sega Zombie, like you saw in the beginning of the intro, but Sega Zombie has sent me um, a couple of vintage 8-bit computers to repair. One of the computers that he sent me to repair is a Commodore 64. This one had the same issue as the previous video that I did last week, um, where it wasn't loading discs. Uh, and you saw on Alan's there that it was the CIA 2 in U2 position. Uh, this one will do exactly the same thing. Um, so we've replaced the CIA in this one, um, and that's all done. So I didn't want to do a video on this one to redo it. If you want to see that video, by all means, um, look at the previous one. Alan's um, video returns, uh, 64 returns, um, and you can see what we're doing with that one. So what we're going to do on this week's video, um, he sent me in um, the Sinclair Spectrum. This is a plus two grey, so it's the old one with the original power supplies in the back, um, and this one's got RAM problems. So we're going to go down, um, replace the RAM, put the diagnostic tester in it, um, and see what it comes up with, um, and see if we can get this up and running. Just we want to keep them alive. So without further ado, let's get to it. So, I've been working on this board for a while now, it came sent to me be Sega Zombie um, because of uh, a RAM issue on the screen, which I'll put some pictures up for you to have a look at what it was doing. What it was doing. So at the time I didn't have any sockets, so I desoldered all these RAM chips, all of them out, um, and soldered some new ones in, didn't have the sockets, but I have now. Um, so what happened then is the screen changed, things altered a little bit, I got the 16k lower RAM back. Um, but nothing, no upper RAM detected at all. Um, so what I've done is I've desoldered them all out again. I've put another set of RAM chips in, in into the top bank. Um, it didn't change. So either we've got issues with these RAM chips, or there's something further on in the board. With these RAM chips being pulled from old units, um, I feel as though we could have some faulty ones. Even though they do test out okay in the RAM tester. Um, and when I swap them into a Commodore 64, um, they work perfectly fine. So it is a little bit, mm, I don't know. Um, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've bought um, 16 brand new RAM chips, the same original model of chip, the same make, manufacturers, down to everything on the top. So once I've swapped them out, they will be original to the Spectrum as well. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do at the moment. Um, I'm gonna desolder all these Bought the whole lot out again and put sockets completely in it so we don't have to mess about anymore. So that's what I'm going to get on with now. Um, hopefully this will cure out um, the, the RAM issue um, after I've done that, um, but we'll see. So that's what I'm going to do now and I'm going to get on with that right now. So I'm not going to bore you, um, I'm going to skip through now and I'll see you back once I've removed all these chips. So what I've done at the moment is I just thought I'd try it this way first, I'm just going to take the top 8 bank out uh, and I'm going to put sockets in there and put the new Ramsey chips in and try it again. Um, I have done a pin out on them to make sure the continuity is correct, um, all you need to do is if you have a look at the traces you can see most of them on the chips. Um, like if I go to the bottom right, you can see the chips are upside down on the board. So it's a little bit difficult to see, but the notch is down at the bottom. So if you go along, you need a beeping, so you can test. So they're all they're all pretty much linked in. There's a, there's a couple down at the bottom here that isn't, um, but I've pinned out all of them and that we're all looking good. So what I'm going to do now is, like I said, I'm going to put the eight sockets into there with a new set of RAM. Um, and then I'm going to fire it up and we'll see if we can get a difference out of it. If we do and it's working, all well and good. If not, 
then we're going to progress and desolder all these ones at the bottom and put um, sockets in them ones as well um, and then put a brand new set of RAM in there and then we'll try it again. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with the soldering. Um, you've seen me solder before. Um, so I'm just going to whip through that and I'll come back to you again as soon as um, all them sockets are in. Okay, so that's all the sockets in. What I found is down the right hand side here, pin four, we have continuity all the way through the chips. I found an IC20 that the one of the traces were damaged in there. Um, so I've repaired that with a little jumper cable on the back. So we can jump that pin four. So pin four now has continuity all the way through the RAM. It didn't before. It lost it on, 20, on IC20. It could have been the fault, um, I don't know, um, but I spotted that. But I'll just take a picture up um, so you can have a look and you can see exactly why um, that wasn't didn't have any continuity. Right, so I'm just going to populate these chips now. This socket, should I say, with some new RAM chips. These are brand new RAM chips. They're exactly the same model as what was originally in the Spectrum. So I'm hoping that after all that faffing around that it could quite possibly have been just as simple as um, that trace that were broken so some of these times you, so you've got to go back over and this is why um, putting sockets in them are great um, because at the end of the day um, you're causing less stress to the board if you put sockets in especially if you keep soldering and desoldering chips it, it, it doesn't work out properly is it Probably difficult to get these pin legs in. It's not in. I'll try and lift that one back out again and try another one. The when they come, the legs are spread quite a long way. You can get um, um, a chip leg straightener. Oh, look at that. Bent as a nine bob note now. Um, you can get chip straighteners. I've not got one of them. I wish I did. Uh, I don't even know where you get them, where you hear from from where you hear them from, where you get them from, but you can, I have seen them, uh, I might have to see, have a look into 3D printing one, something like that, you just put the chip in and you, and you grip it in, um, and it squashes the legs to the correct uh, size, so, hopefully, now that's uh, straightened up a little bit, that one should go in, yep, Here we go. Just always check, make sure that you get the pins, the, the sockets the right way around the ram chips, should I say. Um, and these ones do lead you, everything normally faces upwards, if you know what I mean. We're on a spectrum, um, the pin ones and the, and the notch on the chips face down which you've got to be really careful for, especially if you're working on, you're used to working on other boards, you can put them in upside down very, very easily and not even realise. So I'll just skip through now until we've got all these chips in. So, we've now got a full bank of new RAM in and we've got a full set of RAM chips in there and we've repaired that little um, jumper at the back there, um, trace that was broken between these two chips on pin four. So, fingers crossed now, we can plug this in, and it fires up. So I'm just going to have a tidy away, um, and then I'll come back to you um, and let you have a look, see, see where we're at. Right, so I'm just going to put that screenshot up there, that's what I can see on screen at the moment. Um, so now it's reporting bad bits at 5, and upper RAM at 0. Uh, when I look at the bad bits on the diagnostic form, or sheet, which I'll pop a picture up and show you, uh, you can see that bad bit on a Spectrum Plus 2 grey um, is IC32, which is this one down here. And we've got bit 5 as well, which is IC27, which is this one over here. So what I'm going to do now is follow this diag, and I'm going to drop out that IC, and I'm going to drop out that IC, and I'm going to put sockets in them ones, um, and put some junior round chips, and we'll see what it does then. So. I'm going to unplug it now, I'm going to whip them out and I'll show you once I've got them chips out and we'll have a look at the traces while them chips are out as well. 
So, the camera crashed and this is where we got to when we replaced them to ICs. So now it's reported as IC15. Yeah, it yeah, don't have first E15, but we'll, uh, it's quite different from the 128. So what I did is I went ahead and I desoldered and took out all the other RAM. Now you can just see there's a couple of points there on IC29 at the, the bottom there. You'll see there's another little bit of a um, jumper wire. That's because um, the traces were damaged in that in that area. So I've had to do that um, to uh, to repair them traces lines. So after putting it together, it booted. Um, I tested exploding fist first, and that loaded up and worked all okay. Um, and then I went away and I decided to put Bruce Lee on. So you can see Bruce Lee's loading away there. We've got nice music. Oh, it does, it does bring that nostalgia, does Bruce Lee? So I'm just going to have a little uh, mess around on this at the moment, um, and let's see if the joystick ports are working properly. Um, I'll just plug that in. And then we can select what we need um, interface to, um, and then we should be able to start the game up. Ah, oh, look at that! <laughs> I don't think my joystick's as good as it what it used to be. Um, yeah, I think I need to service that. Um, but yeah, a lot, lot, lots and lots of nostalgia. Um, I, I, I love Bruce Lee. He's awesome. Yeah. What? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Love Bruce Lee, but I'm crap at it. What do you reckon? Yep, yeah, a little bit of that. Uh, I'll have a bit of that. Uh, um, and now I'm going to die again. Uh, no, 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 So yeah, that seems to be working all okay. Um, we don't seem to have any problems with that. It loaded up the um, way of the exploding fist perfectly fine. No problems at all. Um, and it loaded up Bruce Lee straight away as well. Um, although it did fail the first time round when I was trying to load it under the 1 to 8 mode on Bruce Lee. So I just switched it into 48K mode and it loaded straight in. No problems at all. Um, so yeah, that uh, looks like another Spectrum fixed. Well, there you go. You saw that the Spectrum 1 to 8 with the bad RAM, the full 16 RAM chips and socketed all them RAM chips. Um, I pulled out the LS7404 as well to test that. Um, I also pulled out the LS74157. Um, they're all logic chips as well for the RAM and we've socketed them as well. Uh, you'll notice on there there were a few traces that were busted. Um, so we've had to bridge them uh, and jump them. And bodge wires if you like if you like to get it back up and running um, but yeah you can see that it loaded up the way of the exploding fist um, and we we're playing Bruce Lee what an awesome pair of games so if you're enjoying the channel um, please hit the like um, and the subscribe and the notification bell for up and coming videos if you'd like to join us um, it, we're in Facebook Instagram and Twitter so if you'd like to pop on and have a look in the description you'll find all the links there You'll also find a link for Sega Zombie as well if you want to pop over and have a look at his channel. There's a lot of um, Sega stuff, as, as his name says. Um, so yeah, yeah. So, so that's the Spectrum 1 to 8. Bad RAM repaired. That's another thing for us. So all I can say is thanks for watching again and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!